let's do an experiment uh, there is a link uh, below in the description of this video go to that and there is a box there where you can paste some text so uh, paste at least like 1000 words of text like a lot of text and then there is a calculate button below it so if you click on that it will show you word count so basically which word inside your text occurs how many times okay um, so do that and then we will uh, find out some interesting statistical relationships between the text and the word count So if you did what I asked you to do, um, you would have found out a really interesting relationship. Uh, if the text that you have pasted is sufficiently large, uh, you would find that the word that occurs the maximum number of times in your text uh, occurs two times uh, compared to the word that occurs the second most number of times in your text and uh, also three times the word which uh, comes as the third most number of times in your text. Roughly, I guess, not exactly. And this is called as the Ziff's Law. Now, Ziff's law is an interesting law about uh, linguistics and also about probability and statistics, which helps actually create a lot of compression algorithms for text compression uh, in the computer science world as well. So what Ziff's law says is that the frequency of a word occurring in a large distribution of text is inversely proportional to its position in the frequency table. So which means that if the word has a rank of n in the frequency table, uh, the you know uh, it's really uh, the number of times it will occur would be proportional to one by n. So something that occurs at rank number three uh, and something that occurs at rank number one, their ratio would be one by one is to one by three. So it would be one third number of times the third word would be uh, occurring in the text. It has been actually uh, found out that. Uh, there is something called the brown corpus. So the brown corpus is uh, a body of uh, a large number of English language texts. And when we apply the Ziff's law on the brown corpus, it seems to hold very fine. So the three top words in the brown corpus are, is, are the words the, of, and and. And among these words, uh, the occurs uh, twice as many times as of occurs, and the also occurs thrice as many times as and occurs. So Ziff's law was stated by George Kingsley Ziff. He was a linguist and when originally stated, uh, it was an empirical law. Uh, empirical law means that, you know, it has only been observed, but uh, there is no actual proof of it. Even today, there is no real proof of Ziff's law, but there are various theorems uh, which uh, kind of speculate as by the Ziff's law holds true. The most interesting thing is Ziff's law holds true for most languages, not just English. So people have tried it out on other languages like French and German and Hindi as well. And we have found out that uh, Ziff's law actually holds true. The most frequent words uh, occur like at a ratio of one by n uh, compared to you know uh, their rank in the frequency table. So there are a couple of uh, explanations that are attributed to why it happens. One of them is called the principle of least effort which says that you know people who use a certain language uh, would use the least possible effort required to read and write in that language and as a result uh, easier words get used much more than harder words and also so there is a preferential treatment uh, for uh, theorem so which says that you know like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer kind of things so which basically means is the words which get used more uh, keep getting passed on to future generations more and they keep getting used more and more what's really interesting is uh, people often say about uh, many times say for example a politician like donald trump that he speaks like a fifth grader and he only uses very simple words and it's interesting that if you look at the brown corpus which uh, contains a lot of text even inside that uh, there are only 135 words which uh, actually cover more than 50 percent of the total amount of text so while people say that you should have a great and rich vocabulary when you're speaking you're only using about 100 to 150 words uh, usually there's also another law by the same person ziff which is also called the brevity law or the abbreviation law or the zips law of abbreviation which is related to this law but not exactly this law which says that uh, the smaller the words the more frequently it's going to be used and if you try to find out the frequency table of ziff's law that's kind of proven with that so words like the and of uh, and you know these words are used much more than you know longer words uh, even in online text so there has been studies which have been conducted on online text and you know over time what happens is words like beautiful are used less and words like cute and nice are used more so what are applications of Ziff's law uh, it's 
used in a lot of places for NLP algorithms and as well as for uh, text compression. So when you're compressing text, uh, we know that, you know, uh, uh, which kinds of words uh, can be compressed in which kinds of ways. So some compression algorithms, they make use of Zipf's law. Uh, to you know compress only certain words which then uh, which the algorithm knows is gonna uh, occur more frequently and some words which occur really very frequently they are not compressed because you know when compression runs on a big amount of text it has to parse the entire text and has to traverse across the entire text to be able to compress and then decompress as well so if a word so you know you have done compression like Huffman encoding or something like that maybe you might know uh, but uh, words that uh, occur repeatedly if we just denote their position rather than you know writing it every time we can compress text but uh, doing the compression process on each and every word uh, also has its own cost so uh, that's one application another application of course is in NLP uh, systems and also in text generators so you might have uh, checked out GPT-3 which recently uh, was released by OpenAI which is an artificial intelligence system which can generate uh, text so you know, systems like GPT-3, they of course use uh, Ziff's uh, law to make sure that uh, the text that they generate looks natural. And for the text that they generate to look natural, what's important is that uh, the, the text that's generated actually follows Ziff's law because Ziff's law works on all natural text, right? Another, th another law that's uh, related to Ziff's law is the Heap's law or it's also called the Hardin's law. Uh, so what Heap's law says is that uh, as the length of a document uh, grows, the rate of growth of the number of distinct words available in it uh, slow down. So it means that, you know, if uh, there is a 1000 uh, word document and there are 100 distinct words in it, then you grow to 2000 word document, the number of distinct words in it would be less than 200. It won't be 200. It only grow proportionally. And if there's a 3000 word document, then the number of distinct words would be much less than 300. So as the length of the document keeps growing, uh, you know, as per Ziff's law, actually, uh, there are going to be some some words which are very very common and uh, the uncommon words are gonna be occurring very very less so there is a certain point beyond which if your length of your document keeps on growing uh, new uh, words are not really added into your vocabulary your vocabulary keeps remaining the same and uh, this is something that's really useful in uh, creating NLP algorithms because when we are creating a model to train we can actually predict the size of the model uh, based on Heap's law before we have done the training uh, because we know how much is the size of our document how much data we are going to be training based on that we can predict the size of the model that will get uh, created. Hope you learned something new today. If Ziff's law and Heap's law were something that you did not know about today, so it's great that you learned about them. Please share the video so that your friends might learn about them as well. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep learning about things like this.